All right. Long-winded girlfriend. Uh, hi, Mr. Beautiful Burr. All right. So everybody's, uh, everybody's talking about this. There are significant others this week, it seems, except for the, the wonderful lady that taught me about the cake. Thank you so much. Uh, me and my girlfriend have been dating almost five years. We live together, have a great dog together. We used to go to concerts before the pandemic and have the most fun and explore consciousness together. Ah, okay. Elevated way of saying take hallucinogens, of course. My only issue is she tells the longest, most uninteresting stories with five million tangents and unimportant side characters. All right. Well, yeah, that can happen. So I would say... My next question would be, well, how many stories does she tell a day? <laughs> Anyways, I'm not only expected to listen to these 30-minute soliloquies, but follow every plot point and then respond at the very end. I often don't know what to say at the end of a story because they take so long and involve so many topics that I get lost and uninterested. She then always tells me I have conversation issues and I'm not good at holding them conversation issues is that even a thing i figured she just would have thrown out the hacky add my question is is this something that will happen in all relationships no you're just dating someone that doesn't know how to tell a story how do i approach this but the that's weird that you would say this does this happen in all relationships i mean i can tell you this if you're gonna break up with somebody because they can't tell a fucking story, then I don't think you ever love them. You know? My wife tells a great story, but if she's telling a bad one, I just start heckling. I'll just be like, stay on target. Not important information. (laughs) This is what I would do if I was you. I would say, listen, I know that when you tell a story, I don't listen, and I know that that bothers you, okay? My problem is, is your stories are really long, and you just say a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be in there. You give me the director's cut, okay? The 256-minute Once Upon a Time in America, all right? Like you guys suggested I watched last week, which I'm still trying to find where I can watch that. Um, So what I would do is say, okay, you're going to help me become a better listener? Are you going to do that for me? Well, that's what I would say. That's how you go into it. You just say, okay, listen. If you help me with something, I'll help you with something. Right? And then you just say, listen. Can you help me become a better listener? Because I really want to be a better, better listener when you're telling your stories. Okay? Because I know how much that bothers you. Can you help me with that? And she's a woman. And they're giving. So she'll be... A, you know, unless you got somebody ice cold, she's going to be like, absolutely. I'm so happy you asked me that. And then say, great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you tell a better story. (laughs) At that point, she's going to get mad. And just, we're both going to have little flags. I have a red one, you have a blue one, just like politics. All right. When you feel I'm not paying attention, you wave your flag. And when I feel you're going off the rails with the story, I'll wave my little flag. Okay. And I think what you're going to find is you're going to be waving your flag right after I start waving mine. You're going to start to learn where you lose the listener. She's not going to go for this shit. I'm just trying to be funny. Anyways, he says, my question is, this is something that happened. This is something that happens in all relationships. How do I approach this? Every trying to write time, I try to explain to her to simple, simply try and make the stories more concise so I can respond to her point. She gets upset. Yeah, see, you're not going to learn anything. See, a lot of broads, they can't take it. They cannot. See, the thing about women, as much as they're all out there, especially the white women, are out there acting like. You know, they, they exist in some slave labor fucking universe. The reality is, is most of them are so fucking coddled that by the time you get into a relationship with them, they can't even handle the slightest of criticism. 
Not even the slightest. And then they'll, oh, so what you're saying is I'm fucking dead. It's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. But the big thing is, is when they do that, you don't get drawn into a fight. You got to maintain your cool and just be like, listen, you know, you give me pointers. You try to help me be a better person. I'm just trying to help you be a better person. Now, what would happen if every time you did that to me, I just got mad? I would not grow as a person. I'm doing right now what I'm supposed to do in this relationship. We're supposed to help each other become better people. Okay? And if I'm the only one listening to you, then what you're saying is that you're this complete person or you're just so much better than me that you don't need to listen to any of my critiques. Then what the fuck are you doing with me? What are you, slumming it? Um, I'd try one of the two of those. The flag thing would be, my wife would find that funny. Um, I don't know what yours is like. Um, And he goes, I don't want to end the relationship doing this silly issue. Sorry, I'm yawning here. But I'm also at my wit's end. Any advice would be so helpful. Uh, My best to your whole family and thanks. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I do have to tell you, man, like... How many fucking stories is she telling that you and how bad are the stories that you're actually considering leaving? She just tells one bad story a fucking week and it's long as shit. And that's you making you think I got to get the fuck out of here. I would get the fuck out of there. okay? but she's telling one every day and it's becoming a fight or even every other day. Then I guess I get it Um, anyway. All right. Oh, speaking of flags, girlfriend and red flags. Uh, dear ball sack looking ass and hopefully the lovely Nia. I'm a 24 year old from the land of wheat, beer and fat girls. Good old Kansas. The Jayhawks. That's my college basketball team. I've been dating my girlfriend now for about seven months with no problems whatsoever. And have talked about moving in. Ah, Why am I yawning? Uh, about moving her into my house when she is done with schooling come summertime. She's a year younger than me and almost done with school, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, there's been no red flags in the relationship until recently. Oh, Jesus, he writes. Um, She has recently mentioned in a joking manner, we all know it ain't joking, that she would like to get her boobs done. No red flag there, right? Um, no, I mean, I think the Kardashians have made that shit so fucking mainstream. Um, anyway, well, a few weeks go by and she mentions wanting to get a nose job along with lip injections and Botox in her forehead. Okay. Yeah. See ya. Bye bye. I was taken by surprise by the amount of insecurity she truly holds in herself, which is something she has been, she has been open about before. This is a major turnoff to me and seems to be her trying to chase temporary happiness. She's a very attractive lady already in most people's eyes. All right. You need to tell her that she's attractive and lead off the in most people's eyes. Um, I would, I would, I would. Uh, oh, then he says, so here's my problem. Ball sack looking ass. Now, wait a minute. Are you the one giving her this comment? complex this is the second time you said i look like a fucking ball bag i'm ready to get botox halfway through this goddamn question um i would suggest to her i i would just listen i would say i i would talk to somebody first for a long time you're still young and you're still beautiful That's not even still a bad thing to say to somebody like that. You're young and beautiful. I don't know what's going on with you. You need to talk to somebody before, you know, you start making. This is like you're getting a tattoo on your face. That's what plastic surgery is. It's a fucking tattoo on your face. Your eyebrows are going to be that way forever. Your lips are going to be that way forever. Um. I don't know. Well, a few weeks go by, and she mentions wanting to get it. Okay, she already says this. A nose job, blah, 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 blah. Um, So here's my problem. Ball sack looking ass. Uh, In my eyes, she will never be happy, and there will always be something that isn't good enough for her, and it will drain me in the long run. 
I know this seems, ladies, like he's being ice cold, but this is how you need to be in a relationship. You got to really weigh what you're into. I mean, what, what, you're, what you're in for. Because these fucking things are hard. All right? And, uh, you know, I think it's pretty fucking weird if you married someone and by your 15th anniversary, uh, people looking at your wedding photos going like, I didn't know you were married before. No, that's the same woman. Um, anyway, she doesn't seem to think it's a big deal about getting all of this and would and would make her feel better about herself. So what's the issue? Uh, should I let her do what she wants with her body and not worry about it? Or is this a real concern for me to get out now? Give me your thoughts, and hopefully we can hear from the lovely Nia as well. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. I, I would get out now. Just the way this whole thing is written. I don't feel like... You love this person. I think, uh, yeah, I don't think you're 24, you're young. I mean, you know what? That should freak you out at 24 that someone wants to change their fucking face. You're young. Get the fuck out. Just get out. I would get out. That's exactly what I would do. I would get the fuck out. And if you're going to stay in, I would tell her to go talk to somebody for at least a year, a year in therapy to figure out why when she looks in the mirror, she sees whatever she's seeing. Um, but this, her issues are not your responsibility. And your issues are not her responsibility. When you guys get in relationships, your issues are, are, are what's going to come to the forefront. And it's what you're going to have to deal with. And that's where the love has to come in. Because if the love isn't there, it's, it's not going to make it. And just the way you've written this fucking thing, I just feel like it's not there. I could be wrong. If it is there, um, what I would suggest, and you're going to stay in this, I would suggest that this person finds out why it, I'm guessing she's your, around your age, right? A year younger than you, I'm 24, been dating a girlfriend, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's say she's your age, 24. I mean, you shouldn't be getting plastic surgery at 24. What the, you know, what are you doing? You're in, you're in the prime of your life. You should be, this is the beginning part where you learn, you're undoing all of your childhood and learning to accept yourself as an adult and see what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and have a sense of humor about your weaknesses. You work on them and then you, you go to your strengths. And find somebody fun to share your life with. That's what you should be doing. I, I really don't see. Um, it's really why, you know, I don't know, the cultural effect of that Kardashian show. You know, where you got like some of them are like models and they're already, they're, it's like you're a model. You're making a living by being beautiful and you're already getting work done before you're 25. It's just, that's a hell of a fucking statement. Um, that's crazy. I don't know. It's fucking nuts. Anyway, that's just my opinion. What the fuck do I know? All right. Major girlfriend, red flags. Dr- okay, this is what you, I just read, right? 20 years. Is this just like all red flags? Oh, another red flag here. Major girlfriend, red flags, drama. All right. This is the red flag fucking podcast. The challenge. Fl- people throwing the challenge. Fl- that's what we're going to call it from now on. I love, I'm in the relationship with this guy, this woman, whatever. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I got to throw uh, the challenge flag here. All right. All right. Hey, hey, Billy, bust inside. Bust inside? Is that because I'm a dad twice? Is that what it is? Uh, I have a situation on my hands and would like some advice from you. So I am 20 years old and have been with my girl now, girlfriend now for about four months, but we've known each other for about a year ever since starting to date her. I have have dealt with nonstop drama and it's getting to the point I'm seriously considering ending this. Wait, ever since I started dating, I've dealt with nonstop drama. Yeah, these are easy. Get out of this. You're 20 years old. Run free, young man. And don't get into another relationship immediately. Sit down and process and be single, single and figure out what the fuck that was and how, and how you stepped on that landmine so you don't do it again. Anyway, he goes, this all started when... A, about a month ago, we started dating. She told me she was going to get flown out by this dude to celebrate his birthday. What is she, a call girl? I immediately told her that's not happening and freaked out. She told me he's already booked the ticket for her and that he's just a friend. Go fuck yourself. 
Uh, go listen to Biz Marquis for this. You don't need me. And also, even if he wanted to have sex, he couldn't because of his religion, which I immediately called bullshit on. He's a guy and has a dick. All right, good man. You're wise beyond your years. Good for you. I told her if anyone is flying her anywhere, it's me. She then apologized and said I was right and it wouldn't happen again. Bullshit. She also has basically only all guy friends. Dude, get the fuck out of this thing. And they're all super shifty saying stuff like, when are we going to date? And I want to fuck you. I don't care that if you have a boyfriend. Yeah, what are you doing, buddy? No, you're 20. This happens. I have talked to her over and over about this, that I don't appreciate that the other guys talk to her like this, and she does nothing about it but play it off like it's some sort of joke, but nothing ever changes. She never cuts them off. Yeah, yeah, dude. Um, if she hasn't already fucked all of those guys, just get out now before you, you leave with an STD. Uh, the last straw came tonight when she told me that one of the guys said he's going to fly her, show her up and f- fly here. Oh, sorry. Show up and fuck her. When she told me this, I completely lost my shit. Yeah, dude, she's playing you. And meshes the guy only for him to say, I'll fly you and your girlfriend out. Then we'll kick your ass and double team your girl. Then I'll kick your ass and double team your girlfriend. I completely lost my cool at the guy. Guys and my girlfriend for putting up with this shit, putting me in a situation where I have to deal with this. Yeah, dude, this chick is just fucking ridiculous. There's tons of other red flags. Dude, that's the biggest. The fact that she's doing this to you, she's a garbage human being. She's, I, can't, I won't even say garbage at this point. She's just super young, and maybe she needs some fucking therapy. If she was in her 30s, she's a garbage human being. Anyway, this... Come on, Ed. You need to go back to the house and get keys. All right, hang on a second. Oh, it's the lovely Mia, everybody. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. make you walk back. No, I was going to make you walk back. I'm in the middle of, of answering one of the easiest questions ever. This guy's in a relationship. Are you a jerk? Yes. Yes, <laughs> I am a jerk. No, this, she's, this guy, guy's in a relationship with this chick. And she has all these guys like texting her all the time saying, I want to fuck you. I don't care if you have a boyfriend. I'll fly you out. And then she shows them to him. Oh, shit. Bye. Yes. Oh, shit. Bye. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. Can't do that. Uh, we're long distance. So maybe this is why some of. Oh, we're long distance relationships. So maybe this is why some of these problems occur. I'm not sure. I do love this girl. And I just. I'm starting to think this isn't worth the drama and hassle anymore. Would love some advice what you would do in my shoes. Thanks and go fuck yourself. He's 20 years old. Dude, this is the easiest ever kick it to the curb. What say you, Nia? Yeah, I think so. Is this one of these, well, this is why you need to move to my city because if you don't, there's all these guys here. Like, is that what this is about? Is this some kind of manipulation thing or is this just to make you jealous? Is this to sort of keep you on your toes? Either way. It's a mess. Well, if you have to ask any of those questions, yeah. it's time to leave. Definitely. Definitely. Are you almost done? Yes, I am almost okay. done. You know, I, I, I got in some good ones on you last week. Yeah, I know. You know people tweet me and tell me that, like, you're talking shit about me. Like, I can't believe what Bill said. I can't wait for Nia's response. And you know what? That's not fair because I don't even have a chance to defend myself. You just come on here. You talk shit. I'm a part of the podcast sometimes. You know what I mean? And you're not even going to give me the opportunity to like be a part of the discussion? You're just going to talk shit about me? Maybe this is how I get you on the podcast now. I talk <laughs> shit. You could just ask me. <laughs> well, you got, you're always busy with the kids. I know if I talk I'm shit, you think, you think I don't know these fucking rats are going to fucking tech tweet oh, you? Oh, they rat they, you Of out. course they are. They and here you are. Out. And here you are on the podcast. <laughs> you fucking walked right into the trap. So what did you say about me? I'm trying to remember what I was. What I, I'm trying to remember what I, what we were arguing yes, about. Try to remember. No, you can. You have a better memory than me. What was it? Because I think I was right too. Boxes or something stupid. Oh, when I became box boy. Oh God, here we go. Yeah. Box boy. Yeah, defend yourself. 
Def- against what exactly? You, you are a mic- box open. Stick that microphone in my face, but defend yourself like you're some sort of gotcha reporter on the street. Is there any truth to the rumors that you wouldn't cut up boxes, forcing your husband, Hollywood Golden Boy Bill Burr, to cut them up and throw them away for you? <laughs> the fuck is this? Yeah, you gotta cut up some boxes sometimes. I have I have other shit that I'm doing. And oh, always, do you? Oh, yes, I do, and I don't always get to them. And what? I don't have other Fucking shit? Sue me. I don't, sue me. I, sue me. <laughs> I don't have other shit that I'm doing? We both have shit that we're doing. I just don't... I have shit that I'm doing, and I, when I open a box, I fucking cut it up. I just don't think that it's productive to pick at each other about the petty things. Okay? I think this is a petty thing. So my things are petty. You're trying to make me out to be like some sort of inconsiderate person, and I don't appreciate it. Did you say meow or me out? Meow. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to be getting out. sassy. Me out to be some type, like this, you know, some sort of attack on my character by going on and on about the boxes. This is an election year. Huh? Or it was. I'll attack your character all I want. Mm. Well, you know what, Nia? It's not that you don't cut up the boxes. It's the way you just fucking throw them, you I know, or stash them. them. I don't throw, I don't like open a box and just throw it across the floor. That's what it looks like when I walk in there. Like, I you put, handle this I shit. Put, well, it's not that. And you're such a fucking, everything that anyone does is automatically against you. You take shit way too personal. Like, I'm just expecting you to take care of it. What do you mean? Me. Everything that everyone does? Does you're the dudes? <laughs> you're the only one I'm talking to. Stop know, trying to drag invisible people know, into this but shit. You're sitting here trying to make it seem like I'm trying to get you, just, like you just take care of it. You're the box boy. When it's like I'm just being careless in the moment because I'm trying to. All right, let me open this shit. It's usually for the kids. Let me put it away. Careless in the moment it. means most of the times you cut up the boxes. You're you're you you don't cut up boxes. I do, and you can ask my mother who watches me cut them up all the time. Lies, 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 yeah. Ask her. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Ask, her ask her tomorrow and see what she says about me cutting up boxes. Ask her. Okay. Why are you acting like you're scaring me? I'm not. I'm just telling you what it is, and you need to top take, stop taking this shit so personally like I'm trying to come after you or make you my servant. You always do that. Anytime I ask you to do something, anytime you have to step in and do something, you're like, why do I always have to do it? Why do I make, why am that I, why, is why a the, big oh heaping no, pile no, of isn't. bullshit. No, it isn't. Because you're like, I'm Aaron Boy. I'm Box Boy. What do I work for you? It's just like everything is... Yeah, after 900 thing. fucking days, and you keep going like, oh, I was going to do it. I was going to do it. You need to go on the road. Cause like, I need to go on the road? You took it to there? Yes. You fucking home, love me, you asshole. And you're, you're the only fucking broad We're out there that I cut, up, I cut up your fucking goddamn trash. We've been around each other too much. This pandemic is getting to us, baby. That's bullshit. You really think I'm like treating you like Aaron Boy just because I don't cut up boxes? No. The way I have a temper, I have to learn to accept the fact don't. That when you make a sandwich, <laughs> Don't. you're so focused on making the fucking sandwich that I'm going to walk out there two hours later after you did, and the mayonnaise jar is going to be open with the top off. <laughs> the ketchup's going to be over no. there. There's going to be a bunch of crumbs. It looks like a fucking you eight-year-old totally, made it. You are totally I am not. Let's talk about the fact how many, I gla- am not. how many glasses of water are around the house at any given time. How many half-cut lemons? Hey, watch this. Just- Watch this. No, no, you don't interrupt me now. How many half-cut lemons and (laughs) half-cut tomatoes are just littered on the fucking countertop? How many hoodies and hats are strewn about all over the house? I don't say anything because it's not that big a fucking deal, okay? All right, now watch this. You make a whole federal case out of it. Watch this. And then you watch... Shut up! Listen to me. Oh, my God. Go on your goddamn podcast and trash me? Those people love me that listen to this podcast. (laughs) They would never turn against me, okay? Wait a minute. Okay, watch this. That shit about the glasses? You're 100% right. I need to work on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do better with the lemons and the tomatoes. (laughs) Same thing with my hoodies. Why is it so fucking hard for you to do that? All right, fine. You're right about that. Fellas, I that is the way it's done. I will do better. People, 
Say it again. I will do better. And Thank so you. Funny, you know what's actually I really have to admit to, though? And it's going to make my whole argument, my whole craziness just really seem like I'm nuts. But after that last argument we had about boxes, I started to walk upstairs and I saw a box that I just left on the chair after I opened something. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not asking you to be perfect. I just, I just want an attempt. That's all. I'm a mess. Okay, I know. I'm a b- fucking pain in the ass to live with. Just every once in a while, if you could just fucking acknowledge one of my fucking complaints without dragging up everything else that I've done for the last two fucking decades you've been with me. If you could just do that. If we could just remain in the moment. That's all. All right, all right fine. There you go. Okay, great. See? We're friends. We're good. See, people, that's how you have a productive argument. At some point, you got to yell, shut up. <laughs> I did oh. not appreciate that. Oh, come on. It was funny. It was an off the mic. Off the mic yelling doesn't count. All right. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourself.